philosophical theologians have been sharply divided on the question of God's relationship to time. One of the most important arguments motivating a doctrine of divine timelessness is based upon Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity, hereafter STR. In this paper, I want to focus our attention on this particular argument. According to Einstein's special theory, there is no unique universal time, and so no unique worldwide now. Each inertial frame has its own time and its own present moment, and there is no everlasting, uh, or rather no overarching absolute time in which all these diverse times are integrated into one. So, if God is in time, then the obvious question raised by STR is, whose time is he in? The defender of divine timelessness maintains that there is no acceptable answer to this question. We cannot plausibly pick out some inertial frame and identify its time as God's time, because God is not a physical object in uniform motion. And so the choice of any such frame would be wholly arbitrary. Moreover, it's difficult to see how God, confined to the time of one inertial frame, could be causally sustaining events which are real relative to other inertial frames, but are future or past relative to God's frame. Similarly, God's knowledge of what is happening now would be restricted to the temporal perspective of his frame, leaving him ignorant of what is going on in other frames. <coughs> in any case, were God to be associated with a particular inertial frame, then surely as God's time, the time of that frame would be privileged. It would be the equivalent of the privileged ether frame of classical physics. So long as we maintain with Einstein that no frame is privileged, then we cannot plausibly identify the time of any inertial frame as God's time. Neither can we say that God exists in the now associated with the time of every inertial frame. For this would obliterate the unity of God's consciousness. In order to preserve God's personal consciousness, it must not be fragmented and scattered among the inertial frames in the universe. But if God's time cannot be identified with the time of a single frame or of a plurality of frames, then God must not be in time at all. That is to say, he exists timelessly. We can summarize this reasoning as follows. One. STR is correct in its characterization of time. Two, if STR is correct in its characterization of time, then if God is temporal, he exists in either the time associated with a single inertial frame or the times associated with a plurality of inertial frames. Three, therefore, if God is temporal, he exists in either the time associated with a single inertial frame or the times associated with a plurality of inertial frames. Four, God does not exist in either the time associated with a single inertial frame or the times associated with a plurality of inertial frames. Five, therefore, God is not temporal. How shall we assess this argument? Well, let's look at premise two first. Premise two is at best misleading in that it fails to take into account the fact that STR is a restricted theory of relativity and therefore is correct only within prescribed limits. It is a theory which deals with uniform motion only. The analysis of non-uniform motion, such as acceleration and rotation, is provided by the general theory of relativity, here at the <coughs> STR cannot, therefore, be expected to give us the final word about the nature of time and space. Indeed, within the context of GTR, a new and important conception of time emerges. For GTR serves to introduce into relativity theory a cosmic perspective, 
enabling us to draft cosmological models of the universe governed by the gravitational field equations of GTR. Within the context of such cosmological models, the issue of time resurfaces dramatically. All contemporary cosmological models derived from Russian mathematician Alexander Friedman's 1922 model of an expanding material universe characterized by ideal homogeneity and isotropy. Although GTR does not itself mandate any formula for how to slice space-time into a temporally ordered foliation, nevertheless, certain models of space-time, like the Friedman model, have a dynamical, evolving spatial geometry whose natural symmetries guide the construction of a cosmic time. In order to ensure a smooth development of this geometry, it will be necessary to construct a time parameter based on a preferred slicing of space-time. Now, as a parameter independent of spatial coordinates, cosmic time measures the duration of the universe as a whole in an observer-independent way. That is to say, the lapse of cosmic time is the same for all observers. Nevertheless, cosmic time is related to the local times of a special group of observers called fundamental observers. These are hypothetical observers who are at rest with, the ex uh, with respect to the expansion of space itself. Cosmic time relates to these observers in that their local times all coincide with cosmic time in their vicinity. Because of their mutual recession, the class of fundamental observers do not serve to define a global inertial frame, technically speaking, even though all of them are at rest. But since each fundamental observer is at rest with respect to space, the events which he calculates to be simultaneous will coincide locally with the events which are simultaneous in cosmic time. What this implies is that contrary to premise two, it does not follow from the correctness of STR that if God is in time, then he is in the time of one or more inertial frames. For if God exists in cosmic time, there is no universal inertial frame with which he can be associated. <laughs>